Welcome to Hazlitt High School on this cold winter, January 15th night. Inside the gym, the Vikings prepare to take on the Cougars from Lansing Catholic. The atmosphere is just right as these two teams tip off to an extraordinary out-of-conference clash. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tony Huff, and alongside me is my good friend and co-host, Mike Vincent. And Mike, with the stats juxtaposed, who should we look for in this game? Well, Tony, I'd, I think we should definitely look out for Ryan Jones, who averages a solid 16.6 points per game for Hazlitt. Although he's coming off a slow start again, from the DeWitt game where he, only have, where he only scored four points, I mean, I definitely think he should, should come up big for the Hazard Vikings right. tonight. Right, and as you can see there, 16.6 points per game, four points, as you said, against DeWitt. Not what he really wanted to do. I mean, it's his senior definitely year. Not. He really wanted to go uh, out and beat this rival from DeWitt. But another person I think we should really look out for is Nick Freyer. I mean, he's one of these guys that can really get you points. And I, and I think that if Nick Freyer gets points early and often, I think that Ryan Jones, it's going to open up the game for Ryan Jones. Definitely, Tony. Well, I think against uh, the, in the DeWitt game, when you want to bring those stats up, mm -hmm. I don't think you got to look at uh, DeWitt's shooting percentage, which is 53%. Yeah. And it has a basketball. That's pretty remarkable. Right. Yeah, uh, they, they did do a very good job of shooting, but I also think that the Hazlitt defense wasn't playing all that well. And let's look at the competition for tonight in Lansing Catholic. They're 5-0 in their conference, but as you know, uh, with the new conference changes, uh, they're not in the uh, CAC gold that Hazlitt is in right now. They're coming off of a two-game uh, two win streak against Corona and Perry, and those two teams are kind of at the bottom of the barrel bottom as the barrel. their conference uh, shows. But they have some pretty good teams over in the CAC White. That's what they play in. Williamson, they're 6-3 and three on the year, and Lakewood, 4-3. and three. I think that's, those are pr two pretty good teams. Two definitely pretty good teams. Right. And you also got to look at last year, mm -hmm. the um, heartbreaking loss in the final seconds of the second game of the season. Yeah. I definitely think that uh, they have some returning starters from last year. I think we're in for a pretty good one tonight. Right. Uh, one of those starters that you were talking about, Pat Duda, number 11. He has 11 points per game. His season best was 26 at Lakewood. Lakewood, like we said, normally a year in and year out, just hard-nosed competitor. They're four and three on the year, kind of having an off year. But nevertheless, Lansing Catholic getting things done in their conference. They're six and two on the year. So is Hazlitt. And I think that Pat Duda has a lot to do with that team. Definitely does. Lancet Catholic also has some uh, top players. Austin Nichols, who averages 14.8 points per game, mm -hmm. along with Michael Murray, who averages 10.5 points per game. Yeah. Those could be two big weapons tonight for the Lancet Cougars. Well, whenever you have three players that average over 10 points, you have to pick who you're going to guard. And if... You know, let's say you, you guard Pat Duda, you're going to have Austin Nichols decide he's going to start shooting. You know what I mean? It, it's just really hard they to guard. Michael Murray. Yeah, yeah, and it's really hard to guard these guys. Like we said, all of them uh, average at least 10 or more points per game. That's each and every game they come out, they're going to average in the double digits. And yeah, that's remarkable. But I think on the other side of things for Hazlitt, they have a lot of depth. You have Eric Sweet, or I'm sorry, Eric Sweet, uh, he, he starts, but you have uh, Derek Curry and uh, Jared Newton. Those are two very good players, two that, players. that can get you uh, points off the bench. We should say more about R.J. Kelly, though. Yeah. He's a definite threat in the post. He's got a great attitude with the game, and I definitely think that if somehow Ryan Jones, Freyer, and Herrick can't get something going, I think mm -hmm. you should look for R.J. to make some plays. Yeah, and uh, like you said with R.J., he's gotten better. He's got way better. This year than any other year. I mean, you look at, you know, when he went through the, the JV and freshman ranks, it was it, it was kind of testy waters for him it, because he liked to shoot the ball a lot. But now that he's he's kind of, uh, you know, come to terms with what his role is on the basketball team to get those inside, you know, that inside presence for Hazlitt, yeah, I think that you, he could parallel kind of what Kelvin Hissong did when this team went to the Breslin Center uh, just a couple of years ago. Also, Tony, uh, RJ, over the years, has become more and more of a team player. And yeah. You, freshman year, you used to not see that kind of stuff with him, but he's definitely starting to come along and play with his teammates better. All right, so, with the, go. And so with, with the tip-off, Lansing Catholic will start off first. Making some moves on the outside. Three. Three and... Nope. It has its ball. Ryan Jones bringing the ball up the court. 
Passes it out to Caleb Herrick. Eric Sweet at the top of the key. Ryan Jones, look for that. Oh, passes up a open look. Caleb Herrick gonna start it over. I think you gotta look for that too. When this team, uh, a lot of seniors out there right now, actually all of them seniors, <laughs> uh, they're gonna do that a lot, you know, just uh, if it's not working for them, they'll take it back out and start it over as uh, Nick Freyer gets the ball back. Spots up for the two, just off the mark. Doug Hawley passes it out. And it's gonna be an air ball by Pat Duda as they push it up court, trying to get to RJ Kelly, and he Ooh. goes up for a, a shot, does not make it. It's gonna come the other way. Michael Murray bringing it down the court. Great attempt though. Passing out to Austin Nichols, he goes up for the shot, just misses the iron. And Caleb Herrick gonna bring it down the court, and I think another thing we have to watch out for is Caleb Herrick takes it to the hole is that, you know, exactly that, the speed that Hazlitt has. Definitely all three of our guards. And so here, it's gonna be a foul on Ryan Jones. That's gonna send Austin Nichols to the line, shooting two. So, so far, this game has really been just going up and down the court. Uh, no off, it looks kinda like they're a little bit nervous right now. Six minutes and 18 seconds left in this first quarter. Austin Nichols going to shoot the shoot two. First one misses. And he makes the second. Eric Sweet pushes it out to Caleb Herrick. Caleb Herrick takes it over half court. And they're gonna start the offense right here as Nick Freyer has the ball. Sees Ryan Jones down low. And a nice, strip there. Yeah, nice block down low. Here it is, Duck Hathaway gonna bring it up the court. And he sees a couple defenders of Hazlitt. Great save by Nichols right there. Yep. Michael Murray gets the ball back, top of the key. Spots up for the three, Easily and he nails it. Three. That's something has it's gonna have to watch out for. Last week against DeWitt, DeWitt beat him with the three and a little bit of the inside post as Ryan Jones tries to take it in. And RJ Kelly, kind of a frustrating foul right there. Definitely, Tony. Now the thing, I'm, I mean, I know it's early, mm -hmm. but it sort of seems like Haz is kind of getting like a little ahead of themselves. They're not taking the time up in the, right. the offensive side of the ball. Can't really get anything going. Right. I think they gotta start slowing it down and definitely uh, take some more shots because they haven't seen many of those. Yeah, they, they need to get into their zone as it goes off of, looks like uh, Nick Austin Nichols, excuse me, that was Pat Duda. It's gonna be Hazlitt ball. No, it, it looks like that Hazlitt seems just a little nervous and they're, they're just not ready. I know that they wanna come back and really make a statement uh, against Lansing Catholic, especially losing to DeWitt last week. And I don't like to harp on the loss against DeWitt, but it's just a fact. And it was a big loss. So here it is as Hazlitt gets the offensive ball. Once again, there's gonna be a holding foul down low on Doug Hathaway, or Hawley, excuse me. So early on, four nothing, LCC. 5.08 left on the clock for this first quarter. They get it into uh, Eric Sweet. And it looks like Holly gonna have two early fouls that might send him to go sit on the bench. And it does. Bring up fouls. I think that in order for both teams to have a shot at uh, win this game, like if they wanna get a comfortable lead going, they need to avoid foul trouble because that's, yeah. as of now, that's coming up big for Lansing Catholic. Yep, and it's gonna be out of bounds right there on Jacob Clark, so it's gonna remain Hazlitt ball. Yeah, the, the foul trouble really always comes into play, especially early, I mean, what, five minutes and five, seconds left Definitely in this. Definitely don't want to get in yeah. foul trouble early. Yeah, especially with two. They get it into RJ Kelly. They throw it up to Ryan Jones. Tries to go for the reverse layup. Does not go. It's going to go the other way with Hazlitt. Here it is as Pat, Pat Duda. Pat that's good. <laughs> and that's going to be a charging foul on Pat Duda. <laughs> RJ Kelly just sat right there and made sure that uh, he got the offensive charge. And that's something that uh, 
not a lot of high school players do. You know, they don't go for that charge foul, you know, and uh, tr try to get that. Caleb Herrick bringing it down the court. Four minutes and 41 seconds left on the clock. Jared Newton passes it out. Oh, nice pass by, R or by uh, Ryan Jones to RJ Kelly as he goes up and in for two. Four to two is the score here at Hazlitt early. As we said before, RJ's play could come up big for the Vikings mm -hmm. and then. Yeah, uh, for Hazlitt to win, they need to establish that uh, inside, you know, just that the inside game. Here it looks like Pat Duda goes up for two, misses. Caleb Herrick with the rebound. He's bringing it up court, throws it down to Ryan Jones. It's going to go the other way. Austin Nichols bringing it up the court. And there it is. At, well, excuse me, Michael Murray for the three. As some sloppy ball handling happens on Hazlitt's side, but RJ Kelly's going to hold on to the ball. That's Caleb Herrick. Slowing it down. Yep, Caleb Herrick's going to try and get this team some offensive points. We know that we need that they need that. Lutz is going to take a three. Does not go for him. He's a guy who can get you the three too. Nichols Definitely. is going to bring it down the court. Has Clark to the side and Pat Duda right there. Lays it up and in, and that's going to be crucial, the transition game tonight. It was great ball movement by LCC. Yeah, I think whoever wins the transition game is going to take, take, take this game away. Did he get it into RJ Kelly? Nice passes the give and go to uh, As Eric playing some sloppy ball movement at the moment, and I think they definitely need to fix that. Yeah, but I think their mind is in the right place. I think that uh, you know they need to have those plays work for them in order to win, and right now just the passes aren't there. Yeah. Nichols with the ball up top. A little push exchange. He's going to take it for himself. Looks like it's going to be a foul on Caleb Herrick. And it is. That's his first, team third. Nichols to shoot two. And the first one is up and in. A couple of subs come in for the Hazlitt side. Derek Curry comes in for Eric Sweet. And Nick Fryer comes in for, looks like Caleb Herrick. And the second one is good, so it's eight to two here early. Ryan Jones has the ball up top. He gets it down to RJ Kelly. RJ Kelly makes one move, goes up with it with one hand and just does not go in. Nichols bringing the ball down. Nichols is the point guard after Hawley go, went out for uh, having two fouls early. They get it over to Pat Duda. Pat Duda passes it out to number five, Garrett Swain, and it's off the mark. As it's going to bring it down. Nick Frayer passes it out to Derek Curry. Looking for someone to pass to, and it looks like uh, Jared Newton going to get the ball and just going to try to start this all over again. Curry down with the down inside with the ball. Kelly trying to make a move against Clark. Jonesy spots up for three, and it's good. good. And Jonesy's going to have to make some big, big shots like that one in order for this team to win. This has the Vikings team that has a couple of great guards on their team, and yeah, I definitely they, think if they can start hitting. We could see a pretty big blowout here, mm -hmm. but as things are going at the moment, I'm not. Freyer's going to take it down. Freyer's going to take this down. Coast to coast, does not go in. Garrett Swain with the rebound. He's going to bring this one down court. Has out to Nichols. Minute 33 left on the clock. And they're going to try to get it down to number 23, Max Grover. He makes one guy miss, it looks like. I don't know. Goes up and in. <laughs> Went back to the football commentating, makes one guy miss. I don't know what I was <laughs> thinking right there. Jonesy at the top of the key. See, and I like this guard movement right here, getting the ball around. Here it is. Jonesy spots up for three again, and it goes in. 10 to 8 right here in the Viking Dome with one minute left in this first quarter. Nichols bringing it down court. 
Great move by Nichols. Yeah, exploited the hole right there and just took it up and in for two. Get it out to Jonesy. Jonesy has the hot hand right now, gets it out to Newton. Newton for three, and it oh. goes up and over the backboard. Right Dom down. Harrington has just entered the game. Out goes RJ Kelly. Radke comes into the game as well. Looks like he went in for Caleb Herrick. Nichols bringing up down the court. 30 seconds left in the first for, eh, in the first quarter. Nichols with the ball again. Great defense by this Hazlitt defense, I guess. <laughs> that comes straight from the department of the redundancy department. Seven seconds left on the clock. And it's going to be a foul. Nick Frey. Is that a reach-in foul? Is that what they're going to call it? Yep. I think so. So with that, Nick Frey gets his first foul. That's going to be team fourth. Three minutes, or excuse three minutes. 3.8 seconds left on the clock for this first quarter. Austin Nichols the line once again on the night. He's going to sink the first one. I think something that another, another statistic, I, in basketball, it seems like there are so many different statistics that really help a team, you know what I mean, to win the game. And shooting at the charity stripe is one of them. <laughs> uh, what are your thoughts? I mean, do you think that that's going to be a big key stat? Well, if Hazard keeps fouling the way they have been, I definitely think LCC's free throw percentage is going to be big in the end mm -hmm. of this game. Right. And I think Hazard needs to start toning it down, slowing it down a little bit. Right. Getting that defense, defense moving and just playing clean ball. Two seconds left on the clock. Two, one, he gets it up, and it will not go in. So with that is the end of the first quarter. Lansing Catholic 14, Hazlitt 8. And uh, what are your thoughts so far of this first quarter? Well, pretty much as I said before, I definitely think Hazlitt needs to start uh, playing some cleaner D, mm -hmm. um, find some more open looks, and uh, find a little more uh, smarter shots, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I think some, another thing that uh, yeah, Hazlitt is doing is that they're not playing their type of ball. Definitely not. They're, you know, they're not getting the shots that they want, and uh, LCC is making them play their type of ball. They're, you know, they're making them take erratic shots, try to make the tough passes all the time, and you know, this is a great Hazlitt team, though. It is a good it's Hazlitt team, mad. but they, they need to they need to get through this. I mean, we've seen this two games in a row now where they're not playing to their potential. I mean, just a couple. Because you don't want to come off a game just, just like they had against the Wit. Yeah. And come into a and come into a game where uh, they have another slow start, and mm -hmm. they don't want to shoot themselves in the foot, essentially, and even maybe even kill their chances of winning the game. But I definitely think this has a team as is going to pull through on the end yeah. of this one. Well, let's hope so. Here, as we start the second quarter, there's a shot of Rob Porritt. As it started off with the ball in this second quarter. Yeah, and uh, they're going to a four guard set. Ryan Jones, Caleb Herrick, uh, Nick Freyer, and Andrew Radke. Pass out to Herrick. Herrick gets it to Jonesy. Looked like it was tipped. Nevertheless, it's going in the other way. Go over with the ball. It's going to be knocked out by Ryan Jones. It's going to stay LC ball. And it looks like Pat Duda comes back into the game for Clark. So it looks like it's going to be speed on speed right now. No real tall players in the game. So let's look for the, the three-point shots. <laughs> Pat Duda with the ball. Gets it out to Gro Gover. He misses Freer just. with a nice rebound. Yep. Freer gets it out to Andrew Radke. Radke passes it out to Kit Herrick. Herrick throws it over to Freer. Seems like in the second quarter, though, as the Vikings have uh, made strides to start slowing it down, trying
trying to find some more openings, to take some smarter shots. Oh yeah, definitely. You can see you can see that they're waiting for the shot because I mean in in uh, high school basketball there is no shot clock, so they can take as much time as uh, Freyer spots Freyer's up for great. the three, and that one goes in 14-11. Gover heat up those hazard guards. Wow, it looked like Gover. Uh, traveled right there and it's going to be hit out by uh, Andrew Reddick. Andrew Reddick takes it up two on one right here. They get it out to Herrick. Herrick goes up. Great play by Kale. And it's not going to count. I'm going to say it happened on the floor. It's oh, They're going to call travel actually on that one. <laughs> <laughs> there are people walking past who couldn't see what was going on. Nichols going to bring this up. 6.19 left in the second quarter. 14-11, really low scoring affair so far. Pat Duda in the corner. Things are starting to calm down on the LCC yep. side of the ball. Yep, just a little bit. Duda with the ball, pass it out to Nichols. Nichols spots up for the two. And it's going to be tipped back. Shot missed and off the mark, but there's going to be a foul. Looks like a defensive foul on Clark. He has its ball. That's uh, Jacob Clark's first foul, team fourth. Five minutes and 40 seconds left in this first half. Hazlitt desperately needing some points. I think they need to get some sort of inside presence if they want to win this game as Sweet takes it up and looks like it's going to be a blocking foul down on Max Gover. Jonesy passes it out to Caleb Herrick. Caleb Herrick goes in for two. Here it is, Nichols bringing it up the court. Twenty-three Gover passes it out. Spots up for long two. There's definitely a lot of fouls at this point in the game. Yeah, I think if Hazlitt is going to keep doing, they're going to keep playing this kind of game. Mm -hmm. They're going to either have to hope for LCC to start missing some free throws. They're going to start having to pour out some threes. Right. But, well, huh? LCC has five fouls on their team, so a couple more, and you're going to be looking at Hazlitt being in the bonus for every single foul. There's four minutes and 34 seconds left in this first half as Hazlitt is trying to work this offense. You see, and it looks like they're trying to get Eric Sweet the ball as he throws that one out of bounds. But it seems like they're trying to get the ball into Sweet and have him try and score. You know what I mean? Definitely. But... A lot of miscues on both sides of the ball at this point. Yeah. It's kind of a low scoring game for a typical basketball game, even though nothing like DeWitt last week. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, these two teams are playing really good defense right now. As you see, RJ Kelly uh, just blocked that pass yeah. as it goes out of bounds. But yeah, I mean, like you said, you know, low scoring affair, but these defenses are very, very good. You look at Hazlitt, I mean, their points that they're allowing a game is 59.6. I mean, I don't think that's a lot. And uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Here it is as Clark takes it up in for two. That puts it 18-13 in favor of the Cougars. Newton with the ball. Gets it down to RJ Kelly. RJ Kelly gets it blocked. Looks just like a couple of scrappy plays down low. Another as miscue. Well, yep, miscue again. And it's going to be out of bounds on Newts. And so Lansing Catholic going to come up with the ball yet again. Nichols brings the ball down the court. Gets it down to Clark. Clark throws it back up to Murray as he goes up. Looks like he's fouled before the shot. But he will be shooting too. It's Max Gover. And like we talked about, uh, foul trouble. That's RJ Kelly with two now. That's team Play five. Once again. Mm 
Curry. missed the first one yep. off the iron. Derek Curry checks in the game for RJ Kelly, trying to, Coach Portland's probably trying to keep uh, RJ Kelly a little fresh, mm -hmm. get him out of foul trouble a little bit. Yeah, yep. yep. Uh, so definitely want RJ. Yeah, you don't, don't want him going into the second half with three fouls. Definitely not. You hear the dead zone over there, chanting. <laughs> As Murray misses two, Chad Stripling with the rebound. And Chad Stripling is a guy that I like to talk about because he doesn't get a lot of playing time. You know, uh, he's, he has actually been getting a lot of playing time in the last couple games, but normally doesn't get a lot of playing time, but just his hustles every single play. Great in the offseason also, Tony. Jones Ryan gets Jones it. trying to get something going, strip balls on it, and Derek Curry's going to recover for the Hassel Vikings. Newton passes it out to Freyer. Freyer spots three up for, for the three. Doesn't go in. Gover taking it down. He's going to take it for himself. Actually passes it out to Duda. Duda block, but it will be fouled by Knudsen. That's going to be Haslam's sixth foul. Fouls keep on coming. Mm -hmm. That's Newton's first foul. Team six. Crowd chant. The chant going. Yeah. No, no relation, right? Don't <laughs> to, think so. Superintendent also. Yeah. Newton comes out. Looks like Radke will check in for him. Three minutes and six seconds left in this first half. Lansing Catholic, 19 to 13, pending this extra point. And it goes in, so 2013 in favor of Lansing Catholic. Freire's gonna take it up the court and that's Kale Parrick. Radke with the ball, gets it out to Jonesy. Jonesy pauses, looking for someone to pass it to, gets it to Strip. Strip hands it back off. Throws it down to Stripling again. Sees Freire open, he bobbles it just a tad. And I think- As it definitely wants to give Freire some open three opportunities. Yes. Yeah. It's pretty money from out there. They, they want him to uh, just get into the offense as Ryan Jones shoots for two. Doesn't make it, but Curry gets the rebound and a possible second chance uh, point, but it throws yeah, it away. And Goldberg. Not, a, not yeah. a whole lot of shots falling for the Hazard Vikings, but. Right. I mean, if you look at the LCC side of the ball, I mean, not a whole lot of As I'm saying. Yeah. As you say That's it, it. <laughs> Gover makes it, and Rob Porrett right doesn't like how things are going, so he will take a time out. With two minutes and si two minutes and 18 seconds left on the clock for this first half, LC 22, Hazlitt High School 13, and I think that Hazlitt needs to really get some shots to fall uh, in order for them to win. There's a shot of the student section. They all look happy, but uh, I know that they all want Hazlitt to win big right here. Pretty quiet. Right now. Yeah, it's not, there's not a lot going on right now. Definitely uh, not. So with this pause in the game, the score is 22 to 13 in favor of the Cougars. As it down by a nine with 218 left in the like second. Like I, I was just about to say, 218 left in this first half. The fouls are That's six for Hazlitt, five for Lansing Catholic. So foul trouble. Doesn't well, looking at that, I mean, I guess the foul game's a lot closer than I thought it was. Yeah. Uh, I, th I think this game has been uh, called rather uh, well. Mm -hmm. um, both uh, the officials calling it very well, you know, on both sides of the ball. And um, but it also has been a pretty clean game for the most part. I think the the most flagrant of all the fouls was uh, Jared Newton, and he was going for the ball the whole time. Definitely. So here it is. Has a brings although LCC is up by nine, though. I I don't think by any means we've seen a dominant team yet no. in LCC. No, as Chad Stripling tries to take it in, he falls down to the ground. Great attempt by Jones, he get that one back. Gover taking it down court, will take it by himself, takes it in and up for two. As Gover's really starting to heat up for the LCC Cougars right now. Yep, yeah, looks like Gover really knows how to push that ball up as Chad Stripling takes it up and will be fouled. Looks like he'll be fouled by the likes of Garrett Swan. That's his first, team six.
Stripling off the mark on that first shot. A minute 42 seconds left on this clock. Caleb Herrick comes in for Derek Curry. So has it gonna go into a four guard set? Stripling. Stripling makes one. Looks like LCC wants a substitution real quick and they will get that. Swain comes out for Kevin uh, Bergeron. Nicholas taking it down the court. Or excuse me, Nichols. And he's gonna pass it to Clark. Clark goes up for two. Off the mark, gets his own rebound. Misses again. Ryan Jones has the ball, they're gonna push it up court. Fast break. Looked like a- Opportunity Nick Frere and he's gonna get- Oh, oh wow. The iron must have some sort of- uh, Kind of jinx there right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, some sort of jinx, voodoo. I don't feel was, bad for my Hess Vikings. <laughs> yeah, voodoo was the word I was looking for. And uh, will not get the easy bucket right there, so the score will remain 24-14 in favor of LC. And with one minute left to play in this first quarter, or in this first half. Nichols starting to slow it down for the LCC Cougars. And uh, look at this good defense oh. by Andrew Radke, very focused. Very focused, calm, relaxed, and Nichols still trying to get an opening over here. Yeah. I think they're just trying to waste some time right here. It sounds like he's going to get the okay from the sidelines. He's going to take it for himself, passes it down to. Charging foul. Yeah, pass down to uh, Max Gover. That's going to be his second, and that's the second foul that Hazlitt has gotten off of a charge. So I like seeing that. I mean, if they can get uh, Max Gover in some foul trouble, I think uh, that would definitely be big for the Hazlitt Vikings since he has had, I mean, the last four points has mm -hmm. come from him. Right. And he's a great player as well. Herrick bringing the ball down. 27 seconds left on the clock, Jonesy. They're gonna look for a good shot here. He's gonna take it for himself. Goes up and it goes in. 24-16. Your coach P definitely wants to see Jonesy start doing more of that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think he only has five points right now. Nichols bringing it down the court. He's gonna take it for himself and it's gonna be foul on Andrew Radke. Wow. That's his second, team seventh. So from here, for the next five seconds, we will be shooting free throws for every foul. <laughs> well, that's, that's another reason why they put in Andrew Radke. You know, if he has to pick up a foul, at least he, you know what I mean? He's not a starter. Do you believe this yeah. is the third time Nichols has been on the line for the for LCC tonight? And I mean, I can only remember him missing one. From Hazlitt's perspective, he, he's definitely one of the players that you don't want getting on the free throw line. He's, right. He's got a pretty good shot. Well, coming into this game, Nichols averaged 14.8 uh, points per game. I mean, the, and, and he's the leading uh, leading scorer on this team. So with five seconds left, Caleb Herrick going to take it for himself and he's going to be blocked. And that's going to be it for the first half. The score, 26 LCC. 16 Hazlitt, so down by 10. What changes do, does Hazlitt have to make to win this game? Well, Tony, as we've said many times before, I think if you're Hazlitt, you definitely want to start slowing it down, mm -hmm. finding more open looks, and I mean, you, you just gotta you just gotta get out of foul trouble because I mean that's killing us right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're giving if you're giving Nichols yep. three to I mean three or four times up at the free throw line. I mean, yeah, it's not you, gonna be good for you don't you don't want him to go up to the line a lot, you know, and get those easy points. And uh, I, I think what Hazlitt really needs to do is uh, I, their defense is playing very well, but it just seems like that they are. Um, can you hear me? Because I can't hear you. Hello. All right. Prepare to start the second half. Hazlitt down 26 to 16. And uh, let's just go over some scores real quick. Jones has eight. 
Freyer has three, and RJ Kelly has two. We'll go over some more stats uh, later on. Here it is, LCC gonna bring it down. And Back to a little foul trouble thing, Tony. Okay. LCC in the first half was nine for 12 on the free throws. Keep in mind that's nine points, obviously. Mm -hmm. Hazlitt only one for two. I mean, if you took away all the free throws in this game, it would be a two-point game with LCC ahead. Yeah. So Hazlitt definitely needs to keep in mind the foul trouble. And as you game. say that, a foul comes down on Ryan Jones. It's possibly things starting to look up for the Hazlitt Vikings right here. Doug Hawley with the foul. That's his third. He's gonna be gonna sink it. So Ryan Jones back at the line. And he misses the second. So Hazlitt keeping their 50% free throw <laughs> percentage. Yeah, they've only shot four though, and the other the opposing team has shot 12 in the first as they go up for a three, and it's good for Michael Murray. Herrick gonna bring the ball down. Nick Freyer passes it out to RJ Kelly. Sweet, gets it to Jones. Freyer to Herrick. And Herrick gonna start this all over. Herrick only has two points in this game, so I, I think if this team wants to win, he needs to start making some points too. As they get to Jones, Great Jones with pass. the Jones Thank with the know. reverse layup and in, he has 11. He has it slowed it down there, and it worked out for him. Definitely have to keep there that in mind for the Vikings. We're gonna have a blocking foul down on Jones as Nichols. Wow, that's big. Goes down and gets up gingerly. I think he got a shot somewhere uh, not a lot of people like. <laughs> Nichols is going to stay in the game. If he went out, that'd be a huge loss for LCC. <laughs> no kidding. Keep in mind, once again, this is the fourth or fifth time he's been to the line. <laughs> well, in the beginning, uh, he was seven for eight for free throws, and he had nine points in the game. So, so, uh, <laughs> so I mean, he's just making all of his points at the line right now. Vikings should play a little more cautiously around him. And he's gonna be nine for 10 on the day. Herrick bringing it down court. He's gonna pass it out to Jones. He's in the corner. Jones just air balls it. That's gonna go the opposite way in LC way in LC's ball. Trying to get the ball to Nichols. Good defense right here, and then it's gonna take. Oh, there's gonna be a five-second call just before LC takes the timeout. So here we go. We got Hazlitt getting a big turnover as RJ Kelly takes it. One hand, throw up, and does not go in. Clark throws up to, throws up to uh, Duda. Duda gets the shot, does not go in. He's going to roll off, and wow, second offensive rebound <laughs> to the Cougars. Yeah, and Jones is going to take this the other way, and there's going to be a foul on Clark. Looks like that will be his second, team second. Seems as has it's playing a little more cautiously right now. And yeah. that should definitely keep him out of foul trouble if they keep it up. Herrick bringing it down the court. I, I think that they need to, to keep the intensity up and the aggression, but just you know do it within reason as Caleb Herrick spots up for the J, does not go in, and it's gonna go. LC Ball, Grover bringing the ball up. He had eight points in the first half, doing a lot on his own, Definitely. might I add. Pat Duda passes out to Clark. Clark gets to Nichols, Nichols for three. Off the mark. And it's gonna be off Duda, and it's gonna go the other way, Hazlitt ball. So with five minutes and 44 seconds left on the clock, looks like LCC is going to take a timeout. 
and a much needed one at that. So 5:44 left in the third quarter, and uh, I guess you know what. What are your thoughts on the first half or the first half of this quarter? Well, up to this point, me. only eight points have been scored. Five of those from LCC, so mm -hmm. has it kind of down right there. And I don't know. It seems like Caleb's trying to take it in uh -huh. his own hands, which is could be key for the Vikings if he starts hitting. But if they can just get some more chemistry going, I think mm -hmm. that, that would definitely be big for their offense. And here's uh, the halftime stats. Uh, Ryan Jones had eight points. He now has 11. Nick Freyer had three, and R.J. Kelly had two. So and uh, leading scorer, Ryan Jones. Mm -hmm. uh, if watching that first half, I don't think I would have said that. You know what I mean? Definitely. I, I think that uh, it was um, sporadic at moments, but he had two three-pointers. So, you know, it was only two shots that really put him into uh, the eight-point uh, tier, so to speak. And uh, I think that the rest of the team really needs to get get off and just, you know, start. They'll start moving while yeah, start Ryan Jones is taking up the court. And I Caleb see. Herrick back to Jonesy. And there gets In the it down post to RJ. RJ Kelly. Oh. And RJ has to make that shot right there, and it's going to be an offensive foul, I believe, on RJ. Seems a little frustrated right now. Yeah. Definitely getting your game, but he's got to look past. And that's his third, and that's not what you want to see if you're a Hazlitt Viking fan. Definitely not. He's a great player. 5.30 left in the clock, and it's going to be all. Nope. Pat uh, is going to hold on to that ball. Michael Murray with the ball. Gets it out to Clark. Murray gets it back. He's a three-point threat. Spots up for two. Nails it. it. Herrick bringing it down. Pushes it up to Nick Freyer. Nick Freyer going to try to get it down Ooh. to RJ Kelly. Does not go. Ball still on the ground. Great play by Kelly. Oh, that and RJ is going to wow. get probably teed up for that one. That was Four a punch. for RJ. And he's lucky to escape that one with a foul and not a technical foul. Well, some, some fans might get angry at that kind of stuff. Like, you got to love RJ's, like, the, the passion he plays with, the intensity he plays with, and it just adds to the game and it even pumps up the Vikings. I mean, some people think that would hurt them, yeah. but, I mean, it can definitely, like, pump them up. Yeah. They can start to get some stuff, more stuff going. And Yeah, well, well, but when you have punches thrown, especially in a game, yeah. you, don't, you don't want the emotions to get too... Uh, out of hand, yeah, I'll uh, uh, bash at the palace. Wow, and great seal by Eric Sweet. Eric Sweet going to take this by himself, and it, wow, looked wow. like he was fouled right there. No call. They're going to bring it the other way, and they're missing their layups, not something Hazlitt really needs to do as Gover has the ball. Makes, has a spin move, throws it down to Clark. Wow. They're going to call a foul. So a possible three-point play here for the for LCC. Yep, and that's going to be a three-point play the old-school way as Clark goes up and in for two. And it looks like LC is just kind of going off with this one. 35-19. to 19. Four minutes and 29 seconds left on the clock. See how repos does on the line here. And he's going to take advantage of the three-point opportunity right there. And Looks like Garrett Swain, or Swan, Swain, excuse me, is going to come in for Clark. So they will go with a more speedy and guard-minded play. Freyer shoots up for three, doesn't make it. Caleb Herrick gets the rebound down low, goes up and does not make it, but he will go to the line for two. I think that's what Hazel needs to do right now, you know, get some points with the clock stopped. And that's great for the Vikings. Mm -hmm. If you can get Her a player like Herrick on the line mm -hmm. consistently, kind of like LCC's been doing with um, um, Nichols, and Herrick's going to be good on the first one. <laughs> I like how you say that, uh, getting it with Nichols, because Nichols, seven for eight, coming into uh, coming into this half. I mean, when you Nine put for a, ten now. Yeah, when you put a guy up on the line that many times, and, 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 he's, and, he's, a and he's a solid shooter, that's just going to be bad. That's going to hurt you. Duda passes it out to Nichols. Nichols gets it to Murray. 
Murray tries to get it down Great low. Great steal by Newton. Uh, that was, oh, that uh, was Brad Arnett. Brad Arnett. The touchdown pass down to Ryan Jones, and he's going to be called. It's gonna, they're going to call out of bounds, LCC ball. Yep, called him out of bounds, and it's going to be LCC ball. Four minutes and two seconds left in this third quarter. Pass out to Nichols. It's going to be a travel. Shuffle his feet just a little too much. If that's possible, to shuffle your feet just a little, too, a little much. too much. Yeah, in basketball. And not call, be called for the travel. 352. Wow. And, Has uh, its ball. Yep, looks like it's going to be out on LC. Caleb Herrick looking for someone to get it into. Arnett going to try to do some work on his own. Gets it down low to Caleb Herrick. He goes up and in for two. That's something Caleb has really brought to the table this third quarter. As we said before the game started, I mean, if, if you can give Caleb Herrick the ball mm -hmm. and you give him some openings, he can definitely get something started for the Hazard Vikings, and I think that's what we need right now. Good things happen when Caleb gets the ball as well as good things happen when Nichols gets the ball. He shot that last one for two. Caleb going to try to do this for himself. Gets it into Jones. Jones trying to get it in. Throws it and to Herrick again. Herrick and Herrick with a hot hand right now. And this team knowing it. 38 25. Three so minutes and 12 seconds left in this third quarter. For Herrick doesn't even matter if it's on the free throw line or in the paint. No. He can do it all. And LC going to take a quick timeout right here. 301, 307, excuse me. Left in the third quarter. 38 25. And Hazlitt mounting a comeback. As it trailing by 13, but I definitely I see some uh, see a little light mm -hmm. bend of the tunnel for yeah. the Vikings right now. Yeah, right now the the, the streak is uh, miniature at best. Yeah. But it is a start, you know, as all streaks have, you know. Yeah, if you if you can inch your if you can uh, inch your way back yep. into a ball game, I mean things are getting uh, exciting. It's high school basketball, and yeah, and then the game. I mean anything can happen. The atmosphere is really good here uh, at Hazlitt. Because you, you got both both sides, and some, and I thought that LC would bring more of a student section here, but uh, obviously they didn't. Looking a little weak over yeah, there. Yeah, they're looking a little weak. In, in years past, they, they always bring pretty good, you know, uh, yep. attendance. But the attendance here for Hazlitt has been, you know, amazing. It's been outstanding, yeah. I'd say. And really made this place a hard place to win. Um, Holt came in here a couple weeks ago. And, uh, back uh, in December. Barely escaped that one. Yeah, Holt barely escaped that. And uh, Holt's really one of those teams that's just been barely escaping a lot of teams. They're 7-1 and one on the year, 3-1 and one in their conference. Uh, I believe they lost to East Lansing. Uh, go figure, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Murray shoots up for the three, He's just off the mark. Grover trying to get the rebound. Ball still up for grabs. They work by on that right there as Jonesy takes down the court. They get down to Freyer. Freyer. Freyer spots up for the three. Freyer for three. <laughs> oh, wow, and that's something you want to have, and it looks like uh, Hazlitt going to take the timeout right here. Mountain yeah. a comeback here, 38-28. Got a great basketball team. So if you're LCC, mm -hmm. your perspective LCC, you definitely don't want to overlook this one, even though you're up by 10. Right. And it is late in the third quarter. I mean, Hazlitt's got everything. They, they've got the talent, mm -hmm. the speed, it, everything to come back in this one. We talked a little bit about... Um, the conference that LCC played in earlier um, earlier in the game, you know, they have Williamston, Lakewood, Perry, Portland, and Corona, and really, there's only three good teams in there, with uh, Lansing Catholic at six and two, Williamston six and three, and Lakewood at four and three. And Lakewood's one of those teams; they're, they're a powerhouse every year. They uh, they've had some pretty good tradition in the basketball state of. Hey, you look at the other teams: Perry, Portland, and Corona. Mm -hmm. I mean. Look at him in any sport. I mean, it's <laughs> well, a, little sh a little shaky. Well, I'm, I'm glad you said that because Eaton Rapids, uh, we all know how bad they were in football season. Oh, yeah. Uh, they're 2-3 and three in the conference right now, 4-4 four and four on the year. So they have more wins than their football team had. I think they had more <laughs> wins in week one. <laughs> Probably scoring more points, too. <laughs> yeah, but let's uh, let's let that one be. Yeah, let's just leave that one alone. Let's... Eaton Rapids was probably one of the worst high school football teams I have ever witnessed. Get back to the game and <laughs> stop oh. criticizing you, Rapids. All right, so my co-host trying to tell me to move on to bigger and better things <laughs> as Caleb Herrick gets called for the foul, looks like. Yep. 
excuse me, Brett Arnett was called for the foul. Nichols starting to look like a, uh, whoa. Yep, they get it down to Grover, Grover goes up for it. It's Doesn't stay. make it. It's gonna so stay gonna, with LCC right there. Yep, gonna stay in LCC's direction. Get out to Murray. Murray throws it back into Grover. Grover with a little bit of mismatch against Ooh. Jonesy. He throws it up and in. Has it bringing it down. Throws it down to Newton. Newton tries to save it. Doesn't. Has it kind of getting ahead of themselves right there. And they definitely need to start slowing it down. Like, Can you announce it, the concessions as popcorn and candy for sale still? Is this okay? This is TV. Yeah. <laughs> One minute and 58 seconds left on the clock. Throw out to Murray. Murray looked like he was wide open for a second, and he a little bit of a finger roll, and it goes in, 42-28. So it's, uh, things are starting to look up for LCC Jeez. once again. Yeah, and that's not something that Hazlitt fans want to see. Definitely not something <laughs> you want to see if you're a Viking fan. So here it is. Slowing it down a little more, trying to get some, be more productive. The game's not out of reach yet, you Definitely know. Definitely not. Got a great ball club that has the Vikings, and Herrick yep. just misses. Yeah, tried to go up for that. Yeah, actually, there's a long, long two right there. As they as get it up saying, to Grover. Grover spots up for three. Wow. And it's good. If a big guy like that can make the threes, there's really nothing you can do to stop it. Nick Freyer, as he pushes the ball up, gives it up to Herrick. Back to Freyer. Jones with the ball in the corner. This ball movement right now by the Vikings. Freyer trying to get it, get something going. Jones. Jones is driving the paint, and he's going to be good with the finger roll. And has it gonna take a timeout? 47.7 seconds left in this third quarter. And there's five fouls for Hazlitt, three <laughs> for the uh, visitor team in Lansing Catholic Central. So <laughs> with that, let's talk a little bit about uh, the Hazlitt um, CAC Gold um, division. You have DeWitt, we, I know we've talked about them a couple times. <laughs> Uh, Fowlerville, Eaton Rapids, Charlotte, and Ionia. And uh, Charlotte and Ionia are kind of at the bottom of the barrel right now. Uh, Eaton Rapids, like we said before, two wins. Yeah, they, yeah, two wins in conference, four and four. I'm going to go out on a limb, though, and say that they got their two wins against Charlotte and Ionia because Fowlerville, Hazlitt, and DeWitt, like in all other sports, are pretty you know, dominant. Yeah, pretty dominant, to say the least. you so, got to say, when it comes to basketball right now, Fowlerville's looking to... Uh, Looking a little shaky at uh, mm -hmm. three and two in the conference and five and three overall. Yeah, but something to look at with uh, basketball is that it's so much different than football, where you can lose three games and still be considered a top competitor. a top competitor in your league. And I think that's exactly what's happening here. That you know they, they played against Dewitt and Hazlitt, and you know they lost both those games. So I mean th those are their two or yeah, those are their two losses on the year. And so you know. Take from that what you will. Just got to sit back and see what happens with that. They're gonna, uh, looks like Lansing Catholic going to try to let the clock kind of go down as Pat Duda trying to make some moves on, Caleb, uh, on uh, Andrew Radke. Pass it up to Clark. Clark throws it over to Murray. Nichols with the ball. Seven seconds on the clock. Looks like Nichols wants the last shot here. Yes, he does. He's going to try to go up for it. It's going to be foul on the ground. stay with LCC. That foul on the ground. We're in the one and one with Caleb's second foul. Nichols going back up to the line. What is he? Uh, nine for ten on the night. Nine for ten at the moment. And it looks like he's going to be <laughs> ten for eleven. Almost perfect. He's really starting to heat it up. <laughs> On the but, free throw line, yeah. <laughs> even I could uh, light it up from the free throw line. <laughs> well, my uh, my game's a little rusty tone, so I'll leave you with that one. <laughs> Chad Shrithling gonna try to get in the ball. Two seconds on the clock. Freyer goes up for the shot, and he held on to that just a little long, so it did not matter if the ball went in. So with that, 47 to 30. In favor of LC, it's been all Cougar basketball tonight, folks. Down by 17, if, if you're a Hazlitt player, I mean, 
I think that this is probably a time in the game where you definitely got to start seeing some more three balls mm -hmm. yeah, and taking more chances because yeah. not a whole lot of time here. Hazlitt has uh, normally gotten about 59 points a game. They're averaging 10 a quarter. <laughs> I mean, and they have 30 right now, so it's like you, you, you kind of wonder where the <laughs> offense has really gone well, in the last week. They're a great basketball team, but... I think they're still a little rattled from that DeWitt performance where DeWitt mm -hmm. was shooting at 53%, which is incredible. Right. But you just got to leave that one alone. But Right. Uh, I, I, quoting, quoting a famous movie, uh, The Lion King, when uh, <laughs> Rafiki says, you know, he, hit, he hits Simba, and you know, he's like, why'd you do that? It doesn't matter. It's in the past. I think that's the mentality <laughs> that Hazlitt really needs to take is that this DeWitt game was – so far ago, obviously only a week ago. So over, they had a good night. Yeah, you know, DeWitt played awesome, Hazlitt didn't, and they need to get over it. And yeah. uh, this game is showing that they, they, they're they not able to bounce back from but the past game, you realize that you're a great basketball team. Right. And, and but, but the they could go far in the playoffs. Oh, I, I definitely agree with that. As Caleb shoots off the mark, it's going to go in the opposite way. I felt like yelling right there for a so second. I, but and the refs are going to confer. Leave it to the Hazard fans. They're going to confer down low, and I think they're going to re overturn this call. Ooh. And wow. Yeah, I kind of wanted to yell right there, yeah. but I'm commentating right now, so I can't. Get up and 750 pull it left. Yep, 7.50 left in the game. LC just trying Wide to. Wide open. Is that He's Murray in the corner? Get. I do believe so, as he nails that one. So where you start. That's where you gotta start look, take some chances if you're has a Viking and start airing out some three balls and right. Andrew Ray, keep it. Jonesy, Jonesy for, for three. three. Rover gonna take this up court. Nichols with the ball up top. Kind of slowing things down, trying to get in that little uh, cruise control. <laughs> Jonesy trying to steal the ball. Ball comes out just for a second, but Murray gets the ball, and there's a 7.04 left on the clock. Looks like Grover wow. spots up for two, and he and seems to be the hot hand tonight. They're going to hand it down to Caleb. Caleb taking it up for himself. And there it is. Put the ball in Eric's hands. Up and in for Herrick. He seems to be, Jesus, I don't seem to, I don't want to use this. Wow, lot. great move by Rack. He's seen some of those DB skills, intercepting that pass. He's going to take it in, baby. Yeah. Reminiscent of the Portland game. <laughs> Here we go. Hazlitt trying to get something going, albeit it is the later latter half of the game. 51-34. Got to turn the momentum in their favor. I mean, mm -hmm. with uh, LCC heating it up like they have been, and there's another three. As the you big say that. fella, Jacob Clark, spotting up for three. When that guy makes it, you know this team is shooting well. Yeah, kind of a little DeWitt thing going on. <laughs> so here we go. Nick Freyer with the ball. Gets to Jonesy. Jonesy going to try to take this in. It's going to be a blocking foul down low on number 10, Austin Nichols. Eric Sweet, Dom Harrington both come into the game. They check in for Chad Stripling and Caleb Herrick. And Jonesy's going to... Well, nope, Jonesy's going to stay in. He's going <laughs> to... <laughs> Eric Sweet wow. gets the ball. Not what you want to see right there. Stripped, so to speak. Pat Duda bringing the ball down. Grover. Passes it to Murray. Murray looking for someone down low. That's Clark. Clark gets it back to Murray. Murray spots up for the three. Just off the mark as Jonesy tries to get the rebound and has it stripped away. Rag, he definitely does no a lot of hard wow. right now. These refs are letting these guys play physical right now. Pat Duda going to just try to slow things down. There's going to be a timeout. And I think that's what LC really needed to do. Things were just happening way too fast with 5.18 left on the clock. As long as they just conserve the ball and don't play sloppy, they have this game pretty much wrapped up. They do, I mean, sad to say, but with 5.18 left in the game, I mean, once again, high school basketball. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's been a lot of ridiculous stuff that's happened. Oh, uh, yeah. And 
I don't think Hazlitt's out of this game at, at all. Uh, 30, uh, 20 points with five minutes and 18 seconds left on the clock. That can happen. It's any given night, really. Right. You know, and I don't, I don't, I don't think that we've really seen our uh, Ryan Jones really uh, strut his stuff, and I don't think we've seen Nick Freyer really strut his stuff. You know, they haven't really been shooting all shooting too well. Shooting their potential. Yeah. You know, and uh, I, I think that these this, these two games that they've played in the last week, um, they're gonna have to take from it. You know that they've gone through some adversity and uh, take it as a learning experience yeah, and just take it come as the, back from it. You know, I know that their goal is to make it back to the Breslin Center, and this team has a shot at doing so. And, and I think that's you know you keep on saying how good uh, high school basketball is. Team can have three or four losses and still have a have a decent season. You know, and uh, right now they're just going through a rough patch. <laughs> Pat Duda passes it out to Clark, who had hit a three. A little confused with what's going on here. Yep, so Nick Freyer. Looked like he gave a little cheap foul. Ref and him had some words to exchange. And Kevin Bergeron shoot his first free throws that night. You know if his name was Spanish, it'd be Bergeron. <laughs> Did not know that. <laughs> All right, here we go. <coughs> Dom Harrington has the ball. Passes out to Jones. Jones. Wide oh. open, Eric. Sweet. <laughs> there you have it. Brings the deficit to 18. Always on the optimistic side right here. <laughs> Just under five minutes left. Get out to and Clark. Wow. Oh, thought the big man was going to go for another Murray. one. Wow. Yeah, you might as well count that. That's money in the bank whenever he's <laughs> wide open downtown. Harrington going to take this for himself. <laughs> going to be a little denied there. Tried to hesitate just a tad. and looks like it's going to be a jump ball maybe. LCC's work. We're going to go LCC ball. 57-36. Four minutes and 29 seconds left to play in the game. Down by 21. Looks like the stands are filing out for the last couple minutes in this game as it looks like uh, some sort of liquid is on the court. Get that cleaned up real quick. So I guess what does Hazlitt really take out of this, Mike? I mean, we, we've seen them, you know, at, at times we've seen the greatness that they possess. Well, you know, what do they take from this game? Well, I, uh, I definitely think it's a big learning experience for them. Mm -hmm. um, like, it's just one of those uh, bumps in the roads, like you said, and they definitely need to take this. And uh, they, they see their mistakes. They have to know in uh, future games that they can't let themselves get behind like this. I mean, they've had DeWitt and LCC, like, same problems. Right. Although, I mean, the shooting in these games for the opposing teams are it's pretty impressive. But right. And here as a... Uh, oh. Just be smarter with uh, your shots, I guess, it comes down to. And <laughs> right. Pat Duda from downtown. That was NBA range as Nick Freyer shoots a three and in. And he's going to answer. <laughs> I knew that was in before it even went through the basket. So Freyer with a late spark right there. And uh, providing some sort of relief to the Hazard fans. I guess. Take what you can get. There's going to be a blocking foul down low on uh, <laughs> Brett Arnett. Brett Arnett getting a lot of playing time tonight. Well... I mean, you look at uh, the, some of the bench players or some of the players that come off the bench for uh, the ha for the Hazard Vikings. Uh, you got Radke, you got Brad Arnett, and then you even have players like Cal Van Wauer and um, Joel Everett right. that oh. can step in and do stuff. And <laughs> they're great JV players, and I definitely think their senior years would pretty, be pretty impressive. I'm glad you brought up the uh, Kyle Van Wauer factor because when, when, when you see R.J. Kelly, Chad Stripling, and Derek Curry leave, I think, and, and Eric Sweet... Where's the big man? Yeah, where, where, where are the big men? And I think Kyle Vandewauer is going to be a very good uh, player next year for his senior season. He doesn't see a lot of playing time, but I'm sure he gets a lot of reps in practice. Definitely. And, and that's only going to help him playing against R.J. Kelly. You know, Chad, Stri Chad Stripling, very physical. One of the nicest people you'll ever meet. But uh, um, when it comes to the basketball court and football field. Junior that we did not mention is Dom Harrington. He's also a yeah. pretty impressive player. Yeah, Dom Harrington... Uh, is a good shooting forward or small forward for this team. Uh, he has very good ball handling uh, skills, and I think that's something that this Hazlitt team is going to look forward to seeing next year. He's also very passionate about the game of basketball, and 
he had a terrific off season. Mm -hmm. like he definitely got in the weight room, hit the right. hit the court a little more, and if he does the same thing this off season, I think yeah. he could be one of the stars for the Vikings in the future. And since we're on the talking about the future, um, we can talk about uh, Andrew Radke, uh, Jared Newsom, and a little bit more about Brad Arnett as he goes up and in for two. <laughs> um, you know, those are three solid people that can help this team move forward, and uh, I think we'll make the transition from these great guards that has, has this year to next year. As Murray finds himself open again, misses. RJ's running around right now. He's That's a rarity around here. <laughs> 306, left on the clock, 62-41, in favor of the Cougars. As Gotta Nichols. admire the Vikings' heart, though, because yeah, they're, they're, they're never giving up. You're down 19 and uh, 21. Yep. And yep. you're still playing with uh, emotion. With gusto, as they like to say. <laughs> gusto. Yeah, it's a fun word to say from time to time. Murray gets it down to Grover. Grover, Grover goes up and blocked by R.J. Kelly. That's, <laughs> he has four <laughs> fouls on him, and he's, he's just not going to hold anything back right now. Definitely. As we said in the past, or previous to this, uh, RJ, he's a great player, and he can change the game if uh, he's playing to his potential. But tonight it sort of seems that the, Vi the Vikings are still a little uh, slowed down on their loss to win, and there's RJ again. And there's the trailer that we wanted to see, and I think that this would have happened earlier on in the game. I think we'd be uh, singing a different song <laughs> for the last two so minutes and 31 seconds. <laughs> And that's going to be a charge on Nichols. Maybe a little makeup call. I don't know. <laughs> that's five fouls on this team. So we're still two fouls away from going to the one and one. Caleb Herrick brings the ball down. Point of the game where you guys start dropping some trays, as Freyer does right here. <laughs> Late and spark. And there's going to be a timeout by Rob Port. So there you have it. Late spark. He has by Nick not. Ray. Yeah, yeah. Rob Port calling that timeout, showing he has not given up on this team. There's a sh there's a great shot of uh, the dead zone right there. But with two minutes and 14 seconds uh, left, 62-46 in favor of the Cougars. You know, they're not giving up. And, and like you said, they're kind of taking the the football heart of steel um, into basketball. Right. Yeah. And, and kind of integrating it into basketball. And I think that's. Uh, Something that's very good to have. Coach P, I mean, he's a great coach, been around mm -hmm. for a while, and he's one of those guys that'll never give up. Oh, yeah, no, he, you know, he's very competitive and uh, just knows how, how to play the game, and he has a great staff over there, Tim Beebe, uh, and, and, and there are some other notables. Just, but I, I just really like that the, the coaching staff that he has over there. Definitely. All of them got a great knowledge of the game and bring a lot to the to the has a basketball program. They really do. Two minutes and four. Go over to inbound the ball. Sixty two to forty six. They get it to Clark. Clark passes out to Duda. Duda gonna bring it back up. Pass with the open look. Yeah, well, they're two minutes left. Yeah. They don't want to. They want to waste a little bit of time right now, right? Wasting the time and Nichols passes out to Duda. Duda gets it out to Murray. Murray's been hot all night. Get to Clark. Back to Murphy. Nichols. Great ball. Oh. There, it's a blocked. Two Caleb on one with Caleb and Freyer. Gonna pass it out to Jones. Jones for the three. Just mm. off the mark. Yeah. Almost an offensive rebound there for Hazlitt with one minute and 32 seconds left on the clock, and I think that could be the proverbial nail in the coffin, 62-46. Oh, RJ Kelly goes into the stands, takes a couple people out. And he took a, little, a couple kids out right there. Sorry for the silence, folks. <laughs> really wasn't his fault. Some innocent bystanders right there. Minute and 17 seconds left in this game. Hopefully those people are okay. 
It's again, just got to <laughs> admire yeah. the pride and yep. the, the passion that RJ plays with. Those were the kids you saw down to the lower on the court. left hand of your screen, and Porat's going to bring in a whole bunch of new people. And RJ still looking over there. I see Kyle Van Wauer and Dom Harrington. Mm. A couple of juniors we were talking about, Radke. And uh, there's a, there's a shot <laughs> of the kids. Hopefully she's okay. Grover for another shot. And here you're going to bring in some more people from LC. As the students file out from Hazlitt. <laughs> Brad Key going to bring it down. Some of the younger guys and experience. Yep, and I think this is going to be the starting five you'll see next year. <laughs> they get it to Joel Ooh. Everett. Lost the handle for a little bit there. This team really lives on the um, live and die by the three mentality. And uh, tonight was just wasn't their night. The basketball gods wouldn't have none of it. <laughs> the basketball gods. No. Well, Hazlitt has three losses this year. You look, you have Holt. A very good area team. DeWitt, possibly one of the best teams they've had in, in a while since they made their Breslin appearance when they had Genghis. And then you have LCC, another good now team. Now LCC. Yeah. So when you when you dissect the... I mean, they're all great teams. Yeah, I mean. yeah. When, like I was just about to say, when you dissect the losses that Hazlitt has accrued, they're to all very good teams. And you look, DeWitt... DeWitt and uh, LCC are, are the best in their leagues, respectively. And, and then Holt is, is second just behind Jackson. So you have... I mean, I think the whole game was like a toss-up. It was kind of anyone's game, and Holt just took the charge. But yeah. I think the games that you got to look at is... The loss that you got to look at is LCC and DeWitt, where has its opponents have had a lot higher shooting percentage. They've got themselves in foul trouble, mm -hmm. and they just played like they just got to start slowing stuff down. I mean, yeah, they're they, playing a little too fast, getting ahead of themselves. And they've, they played a little fast, and then they played lackadaisical at times. That's where mistakes come from. Yeah, and, and uh, it just doesn't seem like they've really wanted it. And uh, But, I, but I'm, I mean, I'm sure they do. I, I don't want to say that uh, they don't want to win because that would be, uh, you know, that wouldn't be fair to this team. It's a great team. Yeah, it's a good team, and, and you know, I, I think that right now all they're doing is they need to find their sense of individuality and you know, just go on it. And, and it's games like this that can bring a bring a team can bring closer a team together. Down. Yeah, bring a team down or bring them closer together. And 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 I would go with the latter of that. I think it's going to bring this team together. So I. Uh, so with seven seconds left on the clock, looks like it's just going to be the end of the game as LC dribbles it out. 64, 47 is the final score. Here at Hazlitt High School, not a very good game in terms of uh, not the result. You yeah, see. not not the result that Hazlitt wanted to see, but nevertheless, what I mean, I guess what do you what do you take from this game, Mike? Well, what do I take from this game? Yeah. Well, I definitely see say that uh, we have to see more of uh, we have to see more um, ball control. Mm -hmm. We need to see uh, them start slowing stuff down a little bit and right. foul trouble's been huge, so you gotta got stay out of that. And I mean, just I guess <laughs> just play better basketball. Pretty, is what you're pretty trying to well. Say. It's just I think that the the Dewitt game they got they got down early and then they right. sort of took that uh, frustration in this game and just yeah, just no, kind of counts. No, I I definitely uh, agree with everything that you said. So with that, I think we we'll wrap it up. We'll we'll wrap it up here from Hazlitt High School. The score, 64 LCC. Hazlitt 47. And remember that the Viking Rewind will air this whole week at 6. And also, January 28th will be a new one. So from Hazlitt High School, the final score, once again, Lansing Catholic 64, Hazlitt High School 47. For, the, for, um, for Mike Vincent and Tony Huff, good night.